Okay. Thank you. Thank you, people, for waiting for me. Uh, today we will talk about the data flow in the claw, and basically this is maybe the most complicated lesson of all, because each time I have to define what the data flow in the claw is, I have to look at the source code again. And there are many ways of understanding what the claw is right now. So I will start telling you that the claw is Alandora for Fedora 4. That's basically. You know that. Well, have been talking about this project since a lot of time, like a year or more. And I will try to explain how these things work with some diagrams. Huh. This is a simple stack diagram. And, well, if you look closely, it's something very complicated, very cryptic. So, since I failed with the serious part, I will start doing doodles. Basically, this is how our different stack pieces look like. A cloud environment. We have this presentation layer user interface in CMS, you already know from Islandora 1, Drupal. We have these indexes that we can use to search and to also ask about uh, RDF, Solar, basic the search, Blaze Graph, or Triple Store. We have this middleware routing, transforming, and assing stuff, I will name that, based on panel. We will start naming this the obscure magic part. And then we have our preservation layer, a repository. And we talk about that the last two sessions. So I think you already have clear how Fedora works and what role ActiveMQ plays there. If we do like a level zero zoom on how these things interconnect, we have Drupal sending stuff directly to Solar and using Solar directly for searches. We have Drupal sending stuff to this Camel component and getting also data back. We have Camel interacting with the Triple Store. We have Camel interacting with Fedora and also Camel listening to ActiveMQ. And even when this is a very simple diagram, basically stating what moves from where to where, we still have this obscure magic part. The big question is, where is Alandora Claw in this diagram? And I think you already are supposing that this Alandora is inside the obscure magic part. But hey, it's not that worse. Arandora Claw is a bit everywhere and among us. It's a very different definition of what a software is if we compare that to our previous Alandora. Our previous Alandora was pretty well defined. It was a few modules interacting with Drupal, but not using Drupal at its full extent and some ways of connecting that to Fedora 3 using Tuke, uh, a standalone library, and basically the rest was done through Tomcat and Java and whatever, and it was not part of Alandora. Well, I love this diagram. Basically, we always define Alandora as middleware, and Basically, on our current system, that Andorra 7x17, just on, on release candidate, I think, we have like Drupal as one thing, Alandora in the middle with their modules that interact at some point to Drupal that live there. And then we have like Fedora Create One, which deals with storage and preservation. On the Landora Claw side, it gets differently handled. 
basically we have Islandora being part of Drupal. It's not anymore something that we try to adapt, but Islandora deals with Drupal content, with Drupal things directly, and how Drupal do stuff is how Alandora does stuff. But also one part of this Alandora Claw lives inside Camel. And it's written in Java and Spring and Blueprint XML and all our stuff that we use to define what Camel is. And then we also have like this individual pieces of PHP that can do stuff that are not directly Drupal modules. And we can use these commands, and Danny did a great job building this command stack based on a framework named Symfony. So our plan, basically, Nick's and Danny's plan initially, and then we jumped into this train, was to use every existing tool, integrate Islandora into these tools natively, and we're no longer a liar. We play roles in multiple ones. Some quick facts about Island or Claw. We make use of Drupal CMS completely. We don't have this separation of XML forms that you will XML. We do Drupal way of ingesting, managing, deleting, moving, and versioning resources and contents. So our Alandora solution packs are not longer a very, very customized version of a Drupal module. They are a real Drupal module. And these resources, this content we create, lives in Drupal, but also in Fedora. They have the same meaning in terms of semantics. But they have different representations. We have a very different version of what we have in Drupal, also in Fedora, or the other way. In that sense, there's not really a source master. We're very used to having, like, we ingest using Islandora, and this goes into Fedora, and it stays there. No, we don't have this notion here. Things can go and are synced between Drupal and Fedora. We can create something in Fedora, and we have this part of Islandora listening to that, and it syncs back to Drupal. And we create we can create something a Drupal site, and this syncs back to Fedora, and also back again to Drupal. Also, Islandora Cloud is all about services, so we expose endpoints everywhere. And it's not longer only a PHP stuff, we have PHP and a variety of frameworks. We have Silex and, and also Symfony and plain PHP and Drupal also. And we have Java and we have Spring and we have Blueprint XML and maybe I'm forgetting someone. And we deal with data in a very async fashion. Basically because we need to transform one representation to another and we have to wait for the different actors in this play to be able to send us a response saying, I'm ready. So it's a stack of moving pieces that depend on each other, interact, and build this whole. That said, there are also human facts about Andor Cloud. And this is very important, and I will try to encourage you to be part of this, not at the end end of this presentation, but here, because what's coming next is very complicated. We're a small group of developers, five humans, and Nick Rest is our project director and a great guy leading us, making us work together and encouraging us when we're tired, and basically this works because we have this project director. And then we have Danny Lamp, which is a tech lead, and he makes best use of his free time because he has an org up to make all the complicated technical decisions and to explore new ideas. And 
the base idea of this is that we are committed to make this a very good software. So we are making it slow. We're not making rush decisions. We're not making everything work and written on stone. We are making it as flexible as possible to solve real needs of our community. So we're solving one problem at a time. And even when we are a small group, we have big plans. Like we're exploring Drupal 8, which means something very different. We're building microservices, etc., etc. And that said, also, we are very open to discuss and modify things. So what we, you will see right now is our 2x branch, which is getting modified, and we're adding stuff, and we're moving, and fixing stuff. It works. It works fine. It's an awesome effort to make it work like we're doing it right now. But we are open to modify things and to adapt to new needs. And to make this happen, we meet each week and you're invited because we don't know what are these new needs. So we need you. OK, since we're talking about data flow, we have to start defining what data is in Alandora Claw. We have these two different ways of seeing stuff. Drupal content, Alandora generates real Drupal content, real ones with fields, entities, content types, whatever you think about you did before on the only Drupal side, well, Alandora interacts with that. So each time you ingest something, you get something into a database, the Drupal one. And we also have the Fedora 4 RDF resources. And Alandora Cruz basically can read, delete, update those real Fedora resources. But even when they mean the similar things, they're not the same. We have different structures. Drupal content is stored in a database. Fedora 4 is stored in right now mode shape and then infinite spans for catching or whatever, and it's RDF basically. Drupal content is, has RDF capabilities, it's not RDF. So, maybe you're already in touch with Drupal content's definition. What I, I will make a short review of what Drupal thinks as of a content. Drupal provides content types and entity types. Entity types can be fields, an image, or whatever, and content types define something broader. At Alandora, we extend the Drupal node, the basic node when you create like node 1, node 2, node 3, to make a bundle. A bundle is like an aggregation of something basic defined as an entity type to some extras. These bundles on our implementation include RDF fields. And these RDF fields are built in Drupal. Yeah, Drupal is RDF enabled. So we have these properties. And we can also add our fields too, like image fields and XML fields. We have expat module. And they are configurable. You can add before creating content to them new ones. We also integrated the UID module. So we have UID back. This is very important. I talked the last two sessions about how Fedora manages identification of resources using paths. Well, we still have the UID. And it plays a big role, but only on the Drupal content. And well, this whole content and entity, because this is like an instance of these content types and bundles, lives in Drupal MySQL. This is a big change. In Alandora 7x, content was always in Fedora 3. Whatever. Now we have like this different representation of our content. Maybe not the whole thing, maybe not this big image, but we are able to see it, to interact with it, and to define it at the Drupal level and also store it at the Drupal level. We can see Drupal as a way of catching stuff. And we also have versions. These entities are versional as a whole, and we get an URL. 
somedomain.com slash node one or UID if you're using to expose it. Again, just I will make this very quick. We have seen this a lot of time. Fedora 4 on the other side has RDF types and properties. It's a graph mm, or resources linked together. Uh, it defines LDP containers and we get these paths as, as IDs and this lives in Fedora 4 and each resource can be versioned, each individual resource. And as you see, one Fedora content can be mapped to one Drupal content, but also one Drupal content can be mapped to a few different Fedora contents. That means we need to transform stuff. Because we have this back and forth. We create something on one side and it flows to our side and it can flow back. Okay. I'm still very in love with doodles. This is a very simple diagram. If something is born on the Drupal side, we make a JSON representation of that. We send it to this obscure camel component. This JSON becomes a message internally. And then it gets transformed with some adding of stuff to a SparkQL update and it gets preserved finally on Fedora. On the other side, if something is born on Fedora, we get this triples RDF representation of the folder source and it becomes then a message. We strip some stuff out that we don't need on the Drupal side. Then we on the camel transform it to JSON and then we send it back to Drupal and we have a representation of that. This is very simplified under a cloud data flow. That means we have one way, other way, but in the reality this mixes. And, don't, and during a real ingest, stuff flows from one side to another and back and forth and back. Even when I don't want to confuse you, I will have to make some more detailed diagrams to explain how this works. Okay. I try to use colors to different different parts. So blue will be Drupal side, green will be camel, red fedora, this I don't know ruby lilac one active MQ and the rose are blaze crash on solar. I'm leaving solar here out because we're dealing that only on the Drupal side and we don't care about what data we have on Fedora to send it to solar. We're sending our representation because people will search what they can see, basically. Okay, we saw that we have this entity types and content types, notes, and we have these base fields that define uh, like a title and some base needs to create something. And then we, on the Dora side, create these bundles. And these bundles are named like our previous solution packs. Right now we have collection and basic image working. And we'll see in the next lessons how to extend this to something more complicated. What we have added to a base node entity type are RDF fields, image fields, and some extra XML data. So you can build a representation of what previously was an Alandora object. This goes to a hook form, a simple form, but this time built by Drupal. So we're using all the goodies that farms in, in, in Drupal had and we never used before and includes local versioning and, and modifying and adding fields and customizing them to using the Drupal interface. So when we submit this form, we have now an entity of type something and this code gets directly to our database. So it's stored there. We have this living now in Drupal. But after it gets stored, our Alandora magic part transforms it to JSON and adds some basic, very basic information and it gets out of Drupal. Where? To our camel obscure magic part. 
that after this slide will, won't be obscure anymore, but still magic. Okay, we pass something to an endpoint. And we have all these little pieces that Danny and, and Nick built that can handle these messages. And it's like a piping system. So Islandor Services gets this JSON representation. It becomes a message inside. Then we transform this Drupal node to SparkQL. We use there internally in Camel something named Islandora commands that are PHP based to transform this to RDF. And then we call a component named FC Repo Camel component built in Java by the awesome. I, I don't think it's he's the only one, but he's a big part, Aaron Coburn. And that component talks directly to Fedora. And it gets out of Camel via post again. So this new representation, because it's in the Sparkle update, gets into Fedora. It's still an RDF version of Drupal Entity. It's missing some stuff, but it has enough to create something inside Fedora. And Fedora adds their repo triples and a path. You remember the path is the way of identifying resources inside Fedora. So it gets added to mode shape internally. There are some events happening, and we know that a new node was added. So Fedora sends something, GMS, out of Fedora to ActiveMQ. And ActiveMQ acts like this queue, in this case, topics. And we can listen to them. So back again to count. And then Alandora Sync comes in place. Well, Alandora Sync is listening for these messages. And he knows that something was added to Fedora. So we take this event message. And then we connect to Drupal. And we get authentication. So we get everything we need to interact with Drupal out of Camel. And then we get again to Fedora to fetch what was modified, because Fedora added new triples to this. Hey, has this a new ID? Yes, because we added it using directly Drupal, and Drupal added a new ID. Great. So we get the Drupal node, the original one, we already have stored in the first step of Drupal, and fetch everything join the new triples to this, we transform this into a Drupal node definition, and we update the Drupal service using, again, this Alandora commands, which are pretty cool. Well, that, at the same time, because this is async, the Fedora Camel toolbox, also built by the awesome Aaron Coburn, is listening to the active MQ topics. And he also gets an event saying, hey, something was added. So he gets this triple star rotor and says, I need the information that was added. Gets out of Camel again to Fedora. Makes an Sparkle update processor. And out of Camel, inserts new triples into Blaze Graph. So, this is complicated, but I tried to make it as simple as possible. What I showed you there was a very simple ingest process, but we're not limited to that. We're able to delete stuff, we can create more complex stuff, like the image where we're putting a thumbnail and also an image inside, and we can also update stuff coming directly from Fedora. I won't show you each of these workflows because you will get like crazy and mad with me. But the idea is Islandora lives in multiple parts and Camel is our best friend to make this synchronization between, between one CMS system not built for preservation to be able to talk with this big repo RDF-based Fedora 4 
that is built for a presentation. The cool thing is, at some point, you can disconnect, if you want, your Drupal instance of Fedora and serve static content and even put like varnish in front of that and it will be super fast. And you can manage whatever you want in terms of Drupal at the Drupal level. Give permissions, versioning, etc. And our Alandora sync services, Nix will deal with that. Right now, it does some stuff. It doesn't do everything while we're getting there. Okay. Again, this is the same diagram we had at the beginning, but with all components playing around. And I'll show you the first one was too complicated. But anyway, this is Drupal. We expose on the Islandora side services. I told you about this REST API. And we have like a way of authentication against Drupal externally. And we can delete resources, update, put, and get information. Alandora on this side provides with content types, RDF mapping, etc., and defines this content types collection, basic image, but also provides mods, so you can still use XML for that, DC, that based on RDF, and also an indexer. This one is new. The other part of Alandora lives here. And I put this new guy in place named Caraf. Caraf is an OSGI container, basically, dealing with enabling all our applications to use multiple different services and interact. So Camel just does the transforming and routing. Caraf provides this base so Camel can find different resources available in different programming languages and different ways of doing stuff and use them like P Lego pieces, like the Islandora commands, which are made in PHP, or the FCA repo camel that interacts with Fedora and built in Java. And we have other ones, like blueprinting and whatever. And Islandora services provides this REST endpoints. Islandora sync deals with syncing and listen to ActiveMQ. And we have this toolbox also there in place. And then we have Fedora, and Blazecraft, and ActiveMQ. Wow, this is huge. I put some numbers there, not saying what comes first, but trying to identify approximately how things will work in terms of parallel work, or next or first. The same I showed you in very detail. I will make it fast here. You put something inside Drupal. Drupal stores this content, this new node, and puts that representation to Solar. Then it sends to Andorra service. Service goes to Fedora. Fedora says, hey, new added to ActiveMQ. Those guys are listening to ActiveMQ. So the FC repo toolbox communicates with Blazegraph and updates, but also Alandora Sync is listening, fetch what was recently added to Fedora and send it back using these services to Drupal. And also, at the same time, when we first started number one, this guy sent something new to ActiveMQ, a new event, an internal one, and adds a very specific set of Islandora triples that don't live here into Blazegraph. Why? Because on the Fedora side, we have paths, and they're useful in data. They're very useful, but we're not exposing them to the world. People can go into whatever my awesome domain.com slash 8080 slash rest. We are protecting that. So when we want to expose linked data, we need the real path. And the real path is my awesome domain slash node one, node two, node three. So 
we need to join what Blazegraph knows about Fedora 4 with what we need to expose from the Drupal side. And I know this is too much, but it's very simple to follow. If you go into reading the source code, and if you have some time during this week, we can do it together, and we can also open the issues and ask for that. And you can interact with me and our people on IRC, IRC or even the local. We can go into the real code step by step. But this basically was built, this, all these diagrams I made and these tools to explain you that this is a different architecture. It's not in sync. You don't have like step one, step two, step three, and, it's, and it ends there. Data flows back and forth. And we need to be able to understand that async is a reality, and we will handle this. Even when lots of stuff will change, async will be a reality for us. And well, the next session will be hands-on the Drupal side, where we're changing, adding fields, and creating a new content type for that.